Hi. So in previous session, we have learnt about uh, the discovery of complement and uh, what are the different pathways of complement and what are the various molecules involved in complement uh, pathway. And now I will take you to individual pathway and uh, in this session, I will take you to the classical pathway. So this classical pathway is, uh, if you remember the previous session, it is triggered by antigen antibody complex. Okay. So let us look at how it is uh, uh, activated. So basically, uh, this is antibody dependent. This is the only complement pathway which is activated by antigen antibody complex. Therefore, cl classical pathway is antibody dependent activation pathway. Okay. So, it is activated by various kind of uh, uh, antibodies. Okay. Uh, uh, this is IgM and IgG. So, IgM is very effective in inducing the complement uh, uh, pathway compared to the IgG. Okay. And there are several subtype of IgG which you will learn when I will take up the antibody. And not all subtype induces the or activate the complement pathway. Uh, some of the uh, this IgG subclass can only activate the complement pathway. Here just one more information I would like to tell that uh, IgM has a more potential to activate complement pathway. You will understand only one molecule of IgM is needed in order to activate the complement pathway. On another hand, in order to activate same level of uh, this complement pathway, 1000 IgG molecule is needed. Okay. This is a one important information. Of course, early stage uh, uh, activation uh, needs uh, the C1, C2, C3 and C4. Okay. So, I would like to uh, discuss in more detail about uh, C1. Okay. So, there are, uh, here you can see that uh, there are various uh, C1 uh, uh, subtype. Okay. This is basically C1 is a macromolecular complex. It is a, it's a quite uh, uh, big molecule as you can see here. And this is basically consist of uh, C1Q and 2 unit of C1R and 2 unit of C1S. Okay. So, so this uh, basically here you can see that there is a uh, C1Q and this C1Q there is a more uh, resolved uh, uh, schematic of C1Q here you can see that there is a uh, triple helix structure, it is a collagen triple helix structure. Uh, I do not know if you studied the biochemistry, this triple helix structure is uh, present in one more very important biomolecule which we call it as a collagen. Okay. So, this collagen is rich in, uh, if you remember, this is rich in proline uh, as, uh, and this proline is basically not present as a proline, it is uh, present as a hydroxyproline and for making this proline to hydroxyproline, there is a need of enzyme which needs a vitamin C. Okay, Probably you may remember, just I am giving you as an information. So, this C1Q has a, this uh, collagen like triple helix structure and this subunit basically binds with the antibody molecule. And in antibody, there is a one region which we call it as a CH2 domain. Okay. So, what is CH2 domain? I will show you in subsequent slide. It is better to understand the structure of antibody uh, so that you are able to uh, 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 understand the things much better. And this C1Q is uh, basically making a complex with here you can see that two subunit of uh, C1R and C1S. Okay. 
So, uh, so this 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 complex is verified by electron microscopy. Here you can see there is a, a on, on top there is a electron uh, micrograph of this complex. Okay. Now let me show you the structure of uh, antibody. So this is just for a quick understanding. I will again discuss this structure when I will take the antibodies. Okay. So antibody has a so this is a one class of antibody uh, the structure which i am showing this is mainly the immunoglobulin g okay the structure is more resemble with uh, immunoglobulin g okay so this immunoglobulin g is having a two light chain here you can see there are two light chain and it is basically consist of 214 amino acid and there is a two heavy chain okay so this heavy chain if you see uh, carefully there is a ch2 region okay and this ch2 region basically bind with c1q okay and this basically this light chain and heavy chain uh, joined together by various interaction and one of the important interaction interaction is uh, uh, by disulfide linkages okay here you can see that these uh, two chains are basically linked by two disulfide linkages okay and uh, there is a uh, some antigen binding region which is present in both light chain and heavy chain okay so this this uh, antigen binding region basically bind with the antigen and then there will be a, some conformational changes taking place in this molecule and this conformational change will be noticed or uh, that will also induce the conformational changes in uh, C1Q molecule or subunit of C1 complex. Okay? This, this, this conformational change will be uh, detected or sensed uh, somehow by this C1Q and then it will interact. Okay? So there is a effector uh, region. This I will discuss more in uh, in, uh, in in when I will take up the antibody. Just for your simple understanding, you should remember there is a FAB uh, part of antibody. FAB here you can see, which is basically binding with the uh, antigen. Okay, and there is a FC portion, and this portion is basically playing an important role in biological activity. Uh, just for your information, antibody molecules are uh, uh, heavily glycosylated. Okay? Here you can, you can see there is a CHO. So, this region is heavily glycosylated. And there are several kinds of antibody. Uh, here, um, uh, you can see that there are five kinds of antibody that is IgG, IgD, IgE, IgA and IgM. Okay? So, among these uh, several kind, uh, uh, IgM is a, uh, as I told you in previous uh, slide that uh, IgM is a very strong in, uh, strong in making this uh, uh, classic or activating this classical pathway okay and this this igm is basically pentameric in uh, in nature so there there are you can see that there are five uh, basic unit of antibodies are uh, joining together and that makes a igm okay and this is very strong uh, this has a more potential to activate the classical pathway compared to the another molecule which is uh, IgG. Basically, Ig stands for immunoglobulin and uh, uh, M is a uh, type. Okay? So, this is a just basic information about the antibody. Now, I will uh, uh, talk how this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, classical pathway get activated. Here you can see there is a very beautiful schematic and this is a uh, uh, this this is a quite self explanatory okay here c1q basically binds with uh, ch2 domain or ch2 portion of uh, uh, antigen uh, antibody which is bound with antigen okay 
and this when it is binding then C1R get activate and once it will be activated there will be a auto catalytic activity and this auto catalytic activity basically activates second C1R molecule and uh, eventually the both uh, uh, activate C1S uh, uh, component of C1 complex. Okay? Here you can see there is a very good schematic. Second step will be once this C1S get activated then this cleaves uh, the complement C4 and C2. So, C4 and C2 once it will be cleaved then this will uh, basically uh, C4 exposes the binding site for C2 okay? and this C4 binds uh, the surface near C1 and C2 binds C4 okay? and forming a, 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 if you remember uh, the aim of activation of complement is to generate C3 convertase okay? and here the C3 convertase is basically C4B2A okay? and this has an enzymatic activity. So, once there will be a lot of C4B2A, this will convert lot of C3 into C3A and C3B and C3B will uh, be coated over the microbial uh, pathogen. Okay? The third step is which is quite uh, obvious and quite clear that this C3 convertase as I explained you uh, hydrolyze or breaks the C3 molecule into uh, basically uh, it will generate the C3A and C3B okay? and C3B uh, will be coated over the, uh, uh, over the target microbe and then it will be uh, readily phagocytose. Another thing that will also generate the C5 convertase. So, C3B uh, which is uh, interacting with uh, uh, C2, uh, sorry, which is interacting with C4B2A which has already enzymatic activity, it will interact with C3B and it will acquire another enzymatic activity that is uh, enzymatic activity for making C5 break okay? and that is en uh, that enzyme will be C5 convertase. So, C5 convertase I will repeat again uh, the, the C3 convertase basically make a lot of C3B. So, one uh, future of the C3B molecule will be coating to coating the microbe and then it will be phagocytose. Another aim is to make a C5 convertase. So, this C5 convertase is generated when C3 convertase which is C4 B and C2A which is having a C3 convertase, this will interact with C3B and that will generate the C5 convertase activity and eventually the C5 convertase will be C4B, 2A and 3B. So, this C5 convertase is needed for generating lot of C5A uh, and C5B. Okay? So, here you can see that this, uh, this there will be a generation of uh, C5B and C5A. Okay? So, this uh, the C3B component of C5 uh, convertase bind with C5 permitting the C5, uh, uh, C4B2A to cleave C5. Okay? And this C5 convertase uh, uh, or C5B binds with uh, C6 and initiate the formation of uh, membrane attack complex. Here you can see that uh, this membrane attack complex is uh, uh, formed uh, and then uh, and this is basically uh, supported by uh, C9. Okay? And this C9 basically make a pore in the target cells and this uh, C9 is uh, basically making the membrane attack complex. So, there is a, a lot of evidences about uh, this uh, membrane attack complex. Here you can see there is a, this is an electron micrograph and this electron micrograph is showing a big pore in the target cell. Okay? And basically, the, there is a 17 molecules of uh, 
policy 9 and this uh, policy 9 basically makes a pore. Okay. So, this uh, membrane attack complex, uh, it will make a pore in cell membrane of target cell. Okay. And iron and a small molecule can freely pass through this pore and the cell cannot maintain the osmotic stability and eventually the cell will die. So, this is all about the uh, classical pathway. In subsequent uh, uh, session, I will talk about uh, alternative pathway and lectin pathway and I will also talk about uh, the disease associated with uh, complement dysregulation. Thank you.